So don't make liars of us that we aren't good uh, fundraisers. So I'm doing point number three and four together here in my little tutorial, and then I have someone else to introduce. So point number three was referred in part to by Ray McGovern. And it addresses one of the biggest myths around this war on terror and the warrantless surveillance and all the other measures that have been introduced. And that is the notion that this all started after 9-11. It didn't. The ubiquitous warrantless surveillance over the whole world, the trillions of bytes of information that our government is gathering, did not begin after 9-11. This NSA program was concocted by the Bush team before Bush Jr. took office. Michael Hayden, NSA director, was asked to come up with his dream, and he delivered it to the Bush team. They implemented this plan secretly seven months before 9-11. In February of 2001, within weeks of taking office, the NSA gathered all of the major telecom companies together and demanded that the telecom companies give the NSA access to their server networks to intercept all U.S. electronic communications. AT&T, Verizon, and Sprint all agreed. Only Quest refused on the grounds that it was unconstitutional. In honor of Quest's stand on behalf of the rule of law, their CEO was railroaded into prison by the Bush regime, where he is today. In honor of an AT&T and Verizon and Sprint, well, they were rewarded with the Telecom Amnesty Act, which retroactively gave the telecoms immunity from prosecution and lawsuits for their felonious actions, a bill that Obama voted for. <clears throat> this eternal surveillance state, and this is a term I'm borrowing from someone who's a former university professor who blogs under the name the polemicist, the eternal if you, surveillance state is not principally for the purpose of combating anti-state terrorism. Terrorism by groups like Al-Qaeda did not even exist until after these EESS policies began being constructed. The eternal surveillance state is part of a new paradigm for governance called public order policies that date from the late 1970s in Europe and that have since spread to the whole world. These policies treat everyone as a suspect and everyone as a target. They are based on instilling fear among the people against unlikely occurrences in order to justify and batter down resistance to their eviscerating fundamental civil liberties and making that the new normal of everyday life. Why? Well, I get into this in great depth in my book, Globalization and the Demolition of Society, which, by the way, is on the table back here. But the most concise answer to that question is that authorities and those that they are part of and beholden to, the 1%, cannot continue to attack the people's living standards and continue to vastly expand the gaps between themselves and the rest of us unless they have the ability to tightly control what people hear and see. This means whistleblowers, alternative voices, and protests of any kind are to be suppressed. Only fake change, nothing more than service appearances and pretty words from the president are permitted under these policies to deceive people as long as possible so they don't see what's really going on and we become like that frog in the pot on the stove being warmed up slowly until it's cooked. It's getting hot. Number four, and this one's, I mean, I'm making this very brief. Do you folks, some of you remember during the Vietnam War, they, would, they destroyed, famously destroyed a burden of village and said we had to destroy it in order to save it? Yeah. Yeah. So this one's called killing the patient in order to save the patient. If you treat everyone as a suspect and everyone as a target, which is what the U.S. government and Obama are doing, 
and you are collecting more than four times the amount of data daily that is contained in the Library of Congress, the largest library in the world, that you are drowning in data. Obama's spying on the whole planet to combat terrorist plots is like treating a small tumor by using irradiation on the entire body of someone repeatedly, second by second, hour by hour, day by day, year by year. Or to use a slightly different analogy, it's like trying to locate and see if someone has a tumor that is a terrorist plot. By giving them a whole body x-ray 24 hours around the clock, and what is going to happen to that patient? 